It has been interesting reading and listening to the verbal ping-pong between club and country this week and the blame game. After England's incredibly disappointing Six Nations campaign, their worst finish in 35 years, and I can't help thinking everybody is missing the point. Ultimately, it is not about what Eddie Jones, the RFU or Premiership Rugby wants and expects, it is about the England players. The one absolute truth I've read is that you don't become a bad team overnight. England do have loads of quality players can become the best team in the world and win Rugby World Cup 2019. But these players have got to start making their voices heard and be more demanding otherwise the chance of a lifetime will pass them by. Not winning a World Cup is a shattering experience for any top team, not giving yourselves the very best shot at winning it is totally unforgivable. This England squad need to show some leadership and bloody-mindedness. At present I see a compliant group trying to please everybody else on and off the pitch. Your role as head coach at this level is to create the culture where even you can be questioned privately. This is not giving away any of your authority. I do not believe in democracy in any really high-performing teams. But I do believe in making sure every player has the confidence to question what is going on and to put forward new ideas. On anything to do with the team without any ramifications in terms of selection. Where's the leadership group? The close working relationship with the head coach? the determination to make sure they are giving themselves the best opportunity? In November 2000 the England players threatened to go on strike over pay before a Twickenham test against Argentina. This was nothing to do with me but I was caught in the middle of the dispute between the players and the RFU over match fees. It got very tense during the week and at one stage it looked as if the match might be cancelled, although I was prepared to pick a team of amateurs. At the time, I was pretty annoyed, to put it mildly with the players in the RFU. It was disruptive and predictably we didn't play particularly well. Although we won 19-0, it was a serious setback and not how any high-performing team should operate. Privately though, I was impressed at the togetherness and collective stroppiness of the squad. Here was a strong group of individuals, not just Martin Johnson and Lawrence D'Alelio, all of them to a man fronted up, prepared to stand up for what they thought was right. And bear in mind this wasn't the all-conquering England team of three years later. These were individuals who, although some had enjoyed great days with the Lions, hadn't yet achieved anything with England. They were putting their careers on the line but knew their value and today's players owe them a huge debt of gratitude, they were not going to be pushed around on or off the pitch. I wish there was a lot more of that in this current group. Thanks to those players who went on to win the 2003 World Cup, pay is no longer an issue. But rest and welfare plainly are. They are not novices anymore, and get stroppy when any criticism comes their way. However, they do not seem to be taking collective responsibility for ensuring they arrive at every test in the best shape mentally and physically. If players are feeling genuinely tired and jaded they need to convey that but please do not say it after the horse has bolted or sit back and assume your players union will fix this. If you need a game or a summer tour off, explain that. Be adult and professional about this but make it happen. This applies to club level as well. If you are exhausted let them know. Nobody can make you play. And if your club will not play ball then a slight hamstring strain or a dodgy back should be enough to take a few weeks off. Selfish? Bloody-minded? Yes, absolutely, but that's how you win World Cups. I noticed that all 23 players in the England lineup against Ireland last week are either injured, starting or on the bench for their clubs this week. Off the pitch, I felt for Owen Farrell last Saturday night as he went through his post-match corporate duties, one of which I was at. He shouldn't have been there. Sponsors want their pound of flesh but sometimes you have to keep them at arm's length and putting your star players in situations like I witnessed is a disaster waiting to happen. Another example of the tail wagging the dog.